Uh, this is my cell right here. It's a little bit bigger than the other cells. That's because this one's a handicapped one, but I like it. When Jay was caught doing meth at 15, he says he couldn't see past the drug. I loved it. I loved everything about it. It was like the greatest rush I ever felt all in one bowl, you know? I loved that I didn't have to eat. I loved that I didn't have to sleep. When the person that caught me said I looked half dead, and I remember telling her that she should have let me die because I didn't see my life clean. At the time of the filming, Jay was clean. Jay, who didn't want to use his real name, has spent a year and a half in treatment and has been in and out of juvie. When he was first locked up, he weighed 108 pounds. Now, almost 18 and clean, he weighs 160 pounds. I'm very nervous because I know the addiction is still in there and I don't want to disappoint myself again. I always see myself doing good, you know. I always see myself, all right, this is last time, this is last time. And then usually it ends up with me back doing it again. And back in detention, but he's turning 18, which means if he's caught again, he'll be thrown in with adults. Yeah, I want to be successful in life. You know, I want to make money the right way. I don't want to, I don't want to fail. Mm -hmm. I want to go to college. I want to finish high school first, go to college, and I want to be a paramedic because I want to help people. I look healthy. I look happy. You know, they see me. The staff that's been here, they know how bad it was. I'm doing this for me, you know. It's my life. This isn't how I want to be. You know, so I got to make the change for myself, and then I want to start making, helping other people change because I've been there and I've done that, you know. I'm one that can say, you know, I know how hard it is. When arrested, kids go to school inside the jail. Teachers there give students a lot of individual attention. Tape it and then put the capsule on top. Paper and pencil tests and exams don't work well. Hands-on works really well. So if you look around, it's rather than give them a quiz or a test, they have to build projects and explain those. The students range in age from 10 to 17, and they are often two to five grade levels below their peers. But here they don't have many distractions. No one's yelling at them, no one's beating them, there's no threats. The staff often uses the term stabilized. They're sober, their needs are met, they don't have to worry about food, shelter, or clothing, so they're able to focus on learning. Holloway says most of these kids have had negative experiences in school. They didn't get the attention they needed, or they weren't identified for their needs, or they weren't recognized for their strengths. Most of the time they're, they're returned to the, the environment that created that behavior in the first place. But, you know, it's, you know, from, from a physics perspective, it's, it's, it's unfortunately like, like a vector. So they're on one trajectory, and hopefully we can bump them enough so it's, they're similar, but hopefully enough bumps, and we've turned them. So it's going to be the centimeters on this one, too. Even though they're little Juvenile sentences are only a few weeks, so the staff has a small opportunity to make an impact on kids. But when they leave detention, many do stay in school. In fact, 80% are more likely to graduate, according to detention records. What do you hope they walk away with? The confidence and the knowledge of knowing that they can learn. Um, that's probably our number one, is to turn them back on, maybe not to school, but to learning. I don't need to 18. Once the kids are released home, many attend the transition school to get caught up on credits they missed. The transition counselor, John Lee, assesses the kids and helps them find their talents. To leave this place believing that they are good at those certain things, and so I feel like it's my job to really instill um, hope and confidence and self-esteem so because I'm not going to be there all you know in their lives so they need to leave on their own with that confidence. Sometimes Lee will make a breakthrough with kids when he opens up about his own struggles when he was their age. I was stealing. I stole anywhere. My parents owned a grocery store. I was stealing at different stores. I was stealing from my own parents anywhere from a dollar to a hundred dollars a day. I stole thousands of dollars from them. They had filed bank. From your parents. Yes, I did. They filed bankruptcy. Um, I was ran away from the cops one time. Um, got involved with some drugs. Our East classroom. Subjects are math and science. 
It was around middle school and high school, which is a pivotal time in life. And I got connected with a church and I uh, met a few men that became my mentors and they really poured their lives into mine and, and gave me hope and gave me the skills and the tools to succeed. And they were a huge part of my life. This is our Bravo unit. Detention manager Gilbert Contreras remembers that critical time when he was young. A lot of the peers that I grew up with, uh, you know, uh, are in prison and, and, and have very different, uh, you know, I think the difference for me is having those caring parents and, and, and that provided some of that structure and provided me with those boundaries that, and, and some of those values that I needed uh, to make sure that I ended up in the same place. But I was very fortunate. Uh, very fortunate uh, and sometimes it, it, it's not a matter of, of, of having those skills but just luck just luck in that you made the right decision at the right time and some of our kids they, they, they made a mistake they made a poor decision uh, I would say 99.9% .9 of our kids are not bad people they just made a poor poor decision and, 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 and it is my hope and it is our staff's hope and it is our our department's hope that that decision isn't something that they end up the rest of their life paying for Contreras and other detention staff all agree the hardest part of their job is seeing kids succeed in detention, then regress to their old ways as soon as they leave. One thing that we have to do as adults and what we learn with working with really troubled kids is that change doesn't come all at once. Brian Mitsuda points to a long-term study by Emmy Werner and Ruth Smith that showed even troubled teens change. The two researchers followed the lives of 500 men and women who were born in 1955. A third were considered at risk. After tracking them into their 40s, they discover most become competent, caring adults. Kids do grow up. Sometimes it's a long journey for some. Sometimes they do things that they're going to have to be in prison for, maybe in prison for, for a long time. But the great majority do grow and develop, and sometimes 18, for sure, with that great study to show, 18 doesn't mean that you're all grown up. If only we could fast forward Jay's life to find out where he will be. Since the filming, he's been released from juvenile detention and has turned 18. Authorities have lost track of Jay, and he hasn't checked into school. They're concerned about a relapse. I'm Laurel Morales in Flagstaff, Arizona.